The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Recently, California television news anchorwoman Stephanie Berugian was asked this question by a newspaper reporter. She was asked, if you could ask God one question, what would it be? And she responded, if I could ask God one question, it would be, is this really what you had in mind? A superb query. And what is the answer? Is this really what God had in mind? A world torn by warfare and disease, poverty and injustice, hatred, prejudice, bigotry? Or is there, is there a better way? And what about you yourself? What does God have in mind for you? Were you designed and created to live in aimlessness and frustration, fear, guilt, and unhappiness? Or is it possible to find the real meaning of your human life? You can if you will. Seek and you will find, said the Master. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive. The living God has a living will for the living of your life. You are not a mere cosmic orphan. A meaningless melange of boredom, bewilderment, appetites, apathy, chaos, and confusion. You are a son or daughter of the living God who has a living will for the living of your life. God can hammer out your question marks into exclamation points. God can give you a new enthusiasm and zest for living, a new love, a new joy, a new purpose in being alive, so that for the first time in all your life you really know who you are and why you're here. On one occasion, the author Somerset Maugham was asked what he believed about human existence, what his creed might be, and he replied, there is no reason for life, and life has no meaning, end of quote. What is your philosophy? What do you believe about it? Life does have a meaning, an ongoing, alive, and progressive meaning for those who will seek for it, who will seek divine realities, and who seek, above all, for God. Daily living can be either a stagnant pond or a sparkling stream, depending upon whether life is going anywhere for you. Stagnant water is water at a standstill, but a splashing stream is water moving forward, and so with your life. It can be alive with joy, zest, and ongoing purpose if you will live your life for God, if you'll give your life to the living God who gave you your life in the first place. You are a son or daughter of God. And this entire universe is a university, a place of learning and growth and expansion of knowledge. But more than that, it is a family, the family of God, in which you are a beloved son or daughter, and your father, the creator of this universe, the creator, controller, and infinite upholder of all reality, the stability of all statics, the dynamism of all change, the first source, the center of all that is, of all things and beings, God, who created it all, God loves you, and God knows you, and God has a purpose for your life. True spiritual growth is the quest for eternal values. The adventure of religion consists in the zest of this quest. The joy of faith is the seeking and finding of God. As a first-hand personal experience, the thrill of faith exists in daily progressive growth. The vision of religion lies in elevated ideals and undaunted dreams. And the reality of religion lies in God, the very source spring of all reality, the eternal who loves you with a love which will not let you go. And this is a thrilling discovery. Consider this parallel. One of the fastest growing plants in all of nature is bamboo. Scientists report that one single bamboo sprout was measured as having grown 36 inches in one span of only 24 hours, it grew a whole yard in just a day. Incredible? Certainly, but there is one sort of growth even more incredible than that, and that is your potential 
the human potential for spiritual growth inside your mind, in your soul, in the inner you, said, Jesus, be you perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. To grow toward that is exhilarating. And that can exhilarate your life, your mind, your feeling, your soul, every day and every night of your existence. For here, for now, and for all eternity as well. Living as you were born and created to live. It gives a forward purpose. Suppose you went into a bus station and asked the ticket agent for a ticket to Chicago. And clasping his hands in glee, he said, You're in luck. We have a beautiful double-deck scenic cruiser bus coming in from Portland, Oregon in about 15 minutes. And you said, But is it going to Chicago? And he said, Well, no, but it is a wonderful bus. The point of this ridiculous parable is that when you buy a bus ticket, you don't so much care where the bus came from, you care where it is going. And there has likewise been much lengthy debate between theology and paleontology on the origin of man, but that is not nearly as important, nearly as significant to you and the living of your life as the destiny of man. Spiritually, what is your spiritual purpose? And in finding God, you can find your spiritual purpose and the source of all purpose, the source of all meaning and all value and all joy and exhilaration and the exuberance for which you were created. Living in love for God and love for others. And those were Jesus of Nazareth's two great commandments. You shall love the Lord your God, he said, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. This is transformative. God can transform your motivations inside you. Jesus said, it's not enough just not to murder. He said, don't so much as hate another person. Fill your soul with love. It's not enough not to rob. He said, actually develop such respect for your neighbor and his property that you don't want to become a thief or a robber. Jesus said, not just to do perfectly, but to be perfect. To be you, therefore, perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect. God is loving. God is infinitely loving. And if you will become, in your life, in your own way, more and more loving, day by day, week by week, year by year, you are thereby becoming more and more godlike. God is just and merciful. If you become more just and merciful, you are thus becoming godlike. God is righteous. So can you become more and more righteous. Be you perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Faith is like a great noble eagle caged and struggling to be free from the iron bars of your doubt. Release your faith this very moment and begin to live by the will of God. And this is a joyous way to live your life. Jesus of Nazareth was a happy man, not as some people picture him to be, sour-faced, looking as if his sandals were too tight, his robe scratchy, and his beard itched. He was joyous. He said, I have come that my joy might be in you, and your joy might be complete. That's why you were created to live. That's a new aspiration, a pole vaulter or a high jumper at a track meet is only going to try to jump or vault as high as the bar is set. The higher he or she sets the bar, the higher he or she will aim with the vault or the jump. Said Jesus, be you perfect. The old ideal was do evil to the evil and good to the good, as one old philosopher summed it. But Jesus said, do good to all. He said, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. And then he said, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Here you've just gone through praying for the people who are doing you wrong. You've been trying to love the people who've been bringing every sort of evil into your life, heaping woe and misery upon your life. Here you feel rebuked, abused, despised, and rejected. Jesus says to return that evil which has been done to you or wrought upon your life with goodness and forgiveness and love done to the very people who've done the evil to you. And then he doesn't stop with that as if that weren't enough. He goes on to say, then rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Then be happy about it. Someone listening 
somewhere around the world to this spiritual renaissance broadcast may say, that sounds like the most backward way possible to live your life on this earth. Here people are doing evil to you, and you're supposed to do good to them in return. You're supposed to love them, those who hate you, those who wrong you. But that is the way of the spiritual renaissance. That is the grand cosmic paradox, the truth of what Jesus proclaimed that good can and will overcome evil just as light overcomes and vanquishes darkness. And it will begin in the inner part of your life, and you can begin to live a transformed life. You might paint a lump of black coal the color of gold, and it might look lovely exteriorly until you dropped it or broke it or cracked or chipped it. The slightest scratch or nick would reveal its true composition, black coal. Just so, religious hypocrisy, spiritual insincerity, these things may wear well enough during the easy moments of your life, but when the hard knocks come, the attritions, the abrasions, the cracks and contusions of living, the true substance of your spiritual faith is then disclosed, whether underneath it be crumbling coal or glinting gold clear through. God will transform your life, your feelings, your aspirations, who you are, clear through, not just on the surface, but clear all the way through. But humankind has traditionally had an intense fear of progress, personally and collectively. In 1851, when Bartholomew Thimonier, a manufacturer of French military uniforms, tried to introduce the first sewing machines into his Paris, France, sewing factory, 300 tailors rioted and proceeded to burn down his plant to the ground. Such was their fear of progress. Humankind have been equivalently rejectful of spiritual progress through the corridors of the centuries. But the hour is striking when humankind is going to begin to see the beginning of a spiritual renaissance upon this earth. The brotherhood of man beneath the fatherhood of God, you can be part of it because that spiritual renaissance can take place in your life. In your life, in the way you treat other people, the way you deal with things, the vexations, the difficulties of existence. You can have a new sense of power and purpose living as the son or daughter of God, the brother or sister to humankind you were born to be. Therefore, to the cynics, the skeptics, the despairing and downhearted, I say, I believe this world can change because I believe that human beings can change. And I believe that people can change because I have seen people changing. I have witnessed them catching fire with new ideals, have beheld them caught up in new purposes larger than their own, have seen them find larger loyalties to supreme values, have seen them discover the will, the wisdom, the power of God. And because I am convinced that changed people can build a changed world, because I've seen faith transform the lives of people, I'm convinced a spiritual renaissance can transform this world. But it begins with you, the individual. It begins in your life. As you find God to the joy of your soul and love God and love others and live fearless of life and fearless of death as the son or daughter of God you were born and created to be, and by faith, if you accept it, you can begin to live that new life right here, right now, this very moment. For free literature on the spiritual life, material which I have written on these very topics, if you feel that divine discontent, that inward spiritual restlessness, yearning for a finding and knowing of God, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written some free literature on finding God, getting to know God, growing spiritually, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the spiritual truth which rings down through the corridors of human history that this entire world was intended and created to live as one family of love, the family of God, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, and you are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of this living God in this great far-flung universal family of God. If you're intrigued by this truth, if that rings some sort of celestial bell inside your soul when I speak it into this radio microphone, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern 
Reverend Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day. <laughs>